let me once again uh, thank EQ and uh, all of you for joining us this uh, afternoon. And uh, what uh, I think the large agenda on uh, the green energy today, obviously, which we have uh, started with is a clear uh, challenge is that, you know, the tariffs are actually causing a lot of uh, pressure back on the uh, developers and uh, it's causing actually a great rundown, I would say, on the returns on equity. So you need actually clearly innovative solutions to do this uh, enhancement of return on equity. And unless you get that, you will not be able to attract the right investors which you need for your project. So that's what allows me to, you know, talk about. So what I would do is I think, uh, not focus as much on the target because that's very well covered, not focus as much on the tariffs. Uh, and the key challenges which we started with, the, you're all aware that the grid parity is more on the other side now. We are uh, challenging almost the, uh, the thermal power, the thermal energy now to you know, compete with uh, the solar in that sense. So I think the key agenda is what I will focus on which is what we need equity, and that's actually coming out of the returns on equity. As I think uh, you all definitely would agree with me that unless the returns on equity is adequate, you neither get your own return, which is actually going to be redeployed. And unless that internal accruals come in, more and more projects that you really want to promote will not be as clearly available. So one of the key solutions which I will discuss with you lies in some of these innovative instruments, which was, which is what uh, I want to bring out. And I will probably cover uh, four of them today, the green bonds, the masala bonds, the invits, and uh, uh, the uh, one more mechanism, the credit enhancement and other things, which I think uh, you will see more and more. We are already seeing it happening in the marketplace, but that's where. But then if you can position your company, a, a small, you know, mention of that was made by Amit also, that, you know, uh, proper structuring of your projects today and its equity today, if you can do it right now and upfront, then I t it helps you in actually structuring a great, great exit. The market is very, very favorable, even right now in India, in my opinion, towards uh, specifically these SME and related IPOs. And if you can position your company in the green sector there, and specifically the, the solar and wind and the related small hydro, I think you do get a, you do get a, a great uh, attractiveness and possibly a great valuation. So that's what, internationally, of course, uh, there has been a great euphoria, but uh, we are seeing largely this getting into, consolidated into a, a direct, I would say, being a direct presence directly into Indian market because now the market is not only well tried, is well developed and you are seeing the PPAs having evolved over a period of time. Though of course I am not denying that there is a threat always looming large on a possible renegotiation of any of these PPAs. But then that's what uh, a typical democratic market like India actually has to, you know, I would say grapple with. Uh, during the time when I was financial advisor to the solar mission of Gujarat, I remember one fine morning I realized that some of uh, uh, some applications have been filed uh, regarding the tariffs being questioned. And I had the benefit of uh, working very closely with the, the, the then energy secretary. And I asked him, you know, I, I called him up in the morning and I said, sir, how can the, the, the uh, PPAs be questioned in Gujarat right under our nose? And it could not have happened without your permission. He's, he has, you know, a very beautiful answer. I'm sure most of you know Mr. DJ Pandian, who's uh, been at the helm of affairs there. He had a very, he has a very typical way of handling each concern, you know. So what time can you be in Gujarat? <laughs> you know, I said, I can be there by the afternoon, sir. What we discussed at length was that, you know, the officers had gone ahead and filed that. So, you know, this is a typical structure, democratic structure, which I'm sure all of you know that more than I do. 
anyone can raise his hand and say, boss, uh, I have done it. He would not even ask the permission to do it. I have done it. And, I, and when we spoke to them, they said, sir, it does not need the chairman's permission to go ahead and question anything. We, we felt it right in the interest of the nation, country, state, and our organization, and we are right there. So you do have to grapple with that problem. So what, why I'm bringing that out also is that, you know, bringing in partners, bringing in innovative financing, talking about, learning about the in innovative instruments like Invits, and covering your risk is a very important thing. Here I would like to mention here that, you know, the tariffs that we've heard about, I was uh, briefly alluding to that when I was talking about the kind of tariffs that you are seeing that have been structured also on the back of very, very high quality structurings which have happened in this country and complete de-risking. So I would say four reasons which actually held that. One was the transparency in the bid. And that's actually, see, the, the regime of feed-in tariff is not going to come back now. Let's, let's not, uh, let's not uh, get eluded by this. So this is going to be completely uh, a bid process now. And that's what we'll have to live with in, in every sector almost. So the transparency is increasing so much that you know each one is competing with the other. So what quality and what cost of money do you bring on table is going to be your key parameter. Each time you will have to work to be more qualitative the next day and the next day and the next day because then you attract the lowest costing capital and then you attract the largest pool of money at the highest possible valuation which is your key success factor in this business. I think I've already said that 80% of both CapEx and OpEx, if, if you all allow me to say that much, is actually the capital which is other than your capital. So the, the best quality that you attract is all that you're gonna. So transparency in bid, the lowered of, lowering of the risk, the credit enhancement by the off-taker, and the CECLP phenomena. So I think uh, very clearly the credit enhancement by the off-taker was led by World Bank and uh, others. We saw that in the Reva bid. More and more it's increasing now. And the lowered risk, I remember Anand running that uh, session at that point of time and taking the opinion of so many people across the country that how could this bid be down to such a great level and crashed almost in the pricing terms and then we all shared our notes in that. But then the, the cost-effective capital, which I have been constantly talking about, and specifically for the larger projects. So I would, I would even urge if you can take up larger projects specifically there, or if you can come down to, the, to become a developer in the off-taker and follow that RESCO model, which, which does give you a great amount of uh, you know, uh, uh, reduction in the cost of your uh, debt financing. So I think that's, those are the two key models and I think I've seen that happening more and more. I'm sharing out of the practical notes there. Well, one thing I do want to talk about very strongly, which is the emergence of the, uh, the, the masala bonds. Green bonds, of course, because it gives you that pool of capital which is focused on clean energy. What does it do typically? So this money is also backed in a lot of sense by social commitments, which is what, which is why I think it was very important that we have heard Ruby talk about, you know, that we have to be environmental and socially conscious on that. Because then it, and specifically this sector, which we are talking about, the CSR funds are typically one which does not really look for a return on capital. But if they get a return on capital, even if it's small, that money will move towards you. So I think you need to position yourself to kind of get yourself endorsed more and more by these qualitative players and more and more attract this private equity which Amit is going to talk more about and my friend uh, is going to talk more about. So I think that masala bonds, we've seen a lot of them. I mean, I'm sure you are tracking the market uh, even more than I am, but uh, of a magnitude of around 14,000 crores, 15,000 crores approximately, already raised in the last few years post the, uh, the uh, transaction, the lead transaction which, uh, which was led by uh, IFC in that sense, the first rupee bond, they called it the masala bond. The big advantage is that you raise money directly on rupee, 
the repayment is on rupee and the furthermore the best part is that your the designated interest coupon rate remains in rupees so and that allows you a lot of leverage it's almost five times of your uh, your uh, cash flows in that sense this is the surplus cash flows so that's a huge amount of money if you see in your cash flows if you dip into your cash flows you'll realize that if you can position yourself on that you get a very large pool of money which acts as your quasi equity even before that entire equity has come into your your fold so i think while you keep waiting for the quality equity but these are some of the tools i thought you must know how to raise innovative money uh, irida also has very recently raised money the rates of interest is getting exorbitantly lower i i mean not exorbitant i would rather say that it's getting so deep down right now 7.13 is what irida is raised around 2000 crores on and nhi is again going for another round of 25000 crores i am told by them so it's a very great market that's developing for all of you and you should remain very well entrenched and when focused on that uh credit enhancement the country has not seen as much but uh, as i interact with uh, junaid and others from world bank i realize that you know more and more it's becoming more important for these multilateral developmental institutions to not give directly money to some of these large corporates that we work with we are realizing that what they are doing is that they will actually give that pool of money almost to credit enhance their portfolio make it very professional and offer this to the lenders at large such that they get very qualitative money and much larger in size and volume obviously your projects which are you know typically in the project stage cannot get rating more than triple b as of now but then with this credit enhancement as a product it brings them to a level of double a etc where you can get some of these qualitative investors and one of the key strategy which we have deployed in in this sector as we have worked with some of the developers is that we've got the timely money availability made to these developers and then thereafter we've actually done what is typically known as the take out so what it held on was that once you have that cash flow available and if the qualitative uh, availability of a credit off taker is there uh, of the of the uh, power off taker is there and your ppa is long term in nature you do get much larger pools of money allowing again something what i was talking about that quasi equity kind of money is what is very important for you well one more product which i actually wanted to talk about of course there are a lot of innovations that we can talk about but then uh, suffice uh, for this uh, presentation i would say is that you know the, the most important thing i'm seeing developing is the invit market the infrastructure investment trust uh, which is typically a perennial business trust that you form on 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 which you actually leverage your current development raise pool of money by transferring that into that as your contribution and invite financial investors from within the country most qualitative ones from within the country i would say and i have seen them participating and the ones that you would why for so you could think about even an aggregation model here you know which is what you typically could uh, get into form a transparent professional business trust bring in yourselves your co-developers into that and offer it to pension funds mutual funds and others to bring pools of money allowing you to further develop more and more stream of project and i think that's some of the best options i have and i think that's what i had to talk about well of course some of you know next gen but not really to, to spend too much of time i've already described we service clients across uh, this spectrum uh, very deeply focused on renewable energy we've been advising various uh, state governments specifically gujarat on their solar mission and have uh, done uh, some transactions in this sector already and uh, we do a lot of valuation for companies across the country including first solar nestle linkedin which is now microsoft actually exxon schrader so on and so forth well i think uh, great to be interacting with you and i'm sure you are collecting some of the questions which i have uh, to ask you people to share with our learned panelists don't leave them 
without asking your best questions. This is a very, very <laughs> enviable panel and uh, I am very happy that I am sitting with them. So please keep your questions lined up and I look forward to interacting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.